That is an electrical arc, and that's what happens when you run into a power line with an auger or a ladder or any tall piece of equipment. Do you know how to prevent that from happening? No. And do you know what to do if that does happen? No idea. Well, we'll answer those questions and much more today on this segment of Safety First. I'm here with Kyle Finley, who is an electrical safety expert. Kyle, thanks for joining us. Um, now, tell us, how can we prevent an arc like that from happening? Well, with the high voltage power lines and 7200 volt line, well, OSHA says we're supposed to stay 10 feet away. Most farmers, you know, they've never been to an OSHA safety training meeting, so they don't really realize that. But yes, anytime we unfold, elevate, raise up a piece of equipment, we are to be 10 feet away from the 7200 volt power line. Now, a vehicle in transit, in other words, when we're pulling into the field, uh, we only have to be four feet away from the energized 7200 volt power line. But once we go to unfold it, raise it up, we definitely need to be 10 feet away from that 7200 volt power line. Okay, so what happens if someone did happen to find themselves in a bad situation? What what would it look like? If somebody got a piece of equipment into it, uh, it would be something like an electrical arc when they bump into the power line. And it's much worse than that right there. That's nothing compared to what really happens in the real world. In the real world, that arc is much larger than what I'm able to do here on my safety unit. Okay, so let's just say that that did happen and you're in, let's say, a combine and you know that that's going on. What do they need to do at that point? Well, if they do get into the power line, they do need to stay in that piece of equipment. It's kind of like the bird on the wire effect. When you look at the bird up here on the wire, the bird is on the energized wire but doesn't know the wire is energized. The bird is okay on that wire. But when the bird reaches over and pecks the ladybug, it's a path. <laughs> Now, in that case, same thing. Quick, short, little arc. In the real world, it's a lot worse, worse than that. If somebody was in that piece of equipment and they had to exit the piece of equipment because it was on fire, they'd have to be like the bird, fly away. When the bird flies off the wire, the electricity doesn't follow the bird. So the person that's in, like say a combine, catches on fire, they're gonna ha have to jump off and then put their feet together and hop away. Well, how far do you hop? We really don't know how far because we don't know where that electricity is going. It kind of dissipates like throwing a rock in a mud puddle. So we tell you to hop as far away as possible. Most of the time, students, the vehicle is not on fire. So the safest place to be is in the vehicle. Stay in the vehicle. All right, Kyle, you showed us a lot about electrical current, but what about lightning? You know, here in the Midwest, there's tons of thunderstorms. When lightning strikes, it's trying to dissipate a large amount of voltage, which is a lot of current. And current gets really hot and destroys things. So when lightning strikes, let's say you've got a television tower there beside the old farmhouse or whatever, it strikes that. It goes through all kinds of electrical components and will damage them. Well, it can blow grounds open, okay, where they go to ground wire stuff. When it blows that open, well, you don't know that. So nobody checks it out. And that's why like a grain bin could become energized and you don't know it. You walk up to grab the bin to step into the bin, you could be electrocuted. We really need to have electricians go in there and check things out after lightning is struck. Okay, so if you were in a vehicle or a combine or a tractor and it contacted a power line, what would you do? I would stay inside the vehicle. Awesome. And let's say you're in that vehicle and it caught on fire, what would you do? I would jump out and hop away with both feet together. Excellent. All right, so I'd like to thank Kyle so much and, of course, the Troy FFA chapter. I'm Todd Thomas, and this has been Safety, Safety First. First.